This is a contraption to demonstrate the flow of the water over the spillway of the Skookumchuck Dam. The water is contained up here. We can regulate the, the amount of flow with this uh, valve here and we can turn it on and off with this valve here. The water back in this box will rise up until it goes over this spillway right here. The scale on this contraption is 1 inch equals 10 feet. So the spillway here really measures 13 and a half inches but the true dimension is 135 feet. There's currently a three foot diameter pipe that goes through the dam so the, the scale dimension here is 0.3 inches. Currently there is no large pipe going through the dam like this but this is a proposal that goes with the hypothesis that we're going to talk about. So this isn't currently built but this is in place and the whole spillway here is in place. So here's a hydrograph of the Skookumchuck Dam spillway or at least it's close what happens is the flow starts down here about 220 cubic feet per second when the flow is only coming through the pipe. Once the flow starts coming over the spillway, the flow increases drastically. In the 2009 flood, uh, the flow got up to 6,889 cubic feet per second. Then the flow started coming back down and then tailed off. What I'd like to do, or what I'm hypothesizing should work, is if we could start our flow earlier following this red line by coming through an eight foot diameter pipe the flow should not go up as high and it should tail off and hopefully we can have almost 3,000 cubic feet per second less flowing through the river that's the hope and that's what we hope that's what we hope to test with our hydrograph contraption so now concerning the hypothesis that we're trying to either prove or disprove is what if we add not a three foot pipe but an eight foot diameter pipe through the dam and put it at invert elevation 455 feet and if we can start running a flow through here before it goes over the spillway will that actually in fact cause the v-notch weir to not flow as much total The next step will be to actually turn on the water and see how everything works. As you can see the water is coming out of the valve. I'm just going to put this large pipe over it to reduce the wave action in the pond. If you look down here you'll see there's water already coming out of the, this is the equivalent of the three foot diameter pipe. And up in the box the water level is rising up as soon as it gets to this arrow, it will start coming over the spillway, and as soon as it gets to the upper arrow, it's the equivalent of the 2009 flood. As you look back here, you can see it's almost to the 2009 flood now, but it's still rising. We can actually measure our flows down here in the V-notch weir. The maximum flow is right here which is the equivalent of 6,889 cubic feet per second. That's what the flow was in the 2009 flood. You can see right now it's just getting up to that line. As you can also see this large pipe isn't flowing anything right now. So now for the hypothesis, what if we add an 8 foot diameter pipe through the dam, it would be at invert elevation 455 feet. Now this pipe will start flowing before the elevation gets up to the spillway here and we'll let some of the flow through before the main event over the spillway. So now I'm going to turn the water on for the test. The water now is coming up in the box. It's coming out of the three foot pipe. As you can see the water is filling up around our eight foot pipe. And pretty soon it's starting to flow. 
In just a little bit, it'll be flowing full. And what we're going to want to find out that it's flowing full is if, in fact, the water in the V-notch weir will flow much lower now after it goes over the spillway. It still hasn't gone over the spillway yet. There it goes. It's starting now. And if you look near the V-notch weir, you'll see that the water is coming up pretty quickly. But where is it going to stop coming up? That's the big question. And the answer is, it comes up just as high as it did without the 8-foot pipe. So, we found out that by adding an 8-foot diameter pipe, we really got the same flow through the V-notch weir, which is really the same as the same flow through the river. So the question is, what if we added one more pipe and, and even had one that siphoned and put water over the spillway. You know, a siphon would be a great idea because you wouldn't even have to excavate through the dam. You could just go over the top. And so that's what the next experiment is going to be about. We're going to open up the flow and run not only this pipe, this pipe, and the siphon and see if we get any different flow over here in the V-notch weir. Now in the final test, we're going to run the 8-foot pipe, the three-foot pipe, and one more. We're going to put a siphon over the over here, and so we're actually going to have two pipes, two eight-foot pipes flowing, and one three-foot pipe. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the eight-foot pipe going. You see, it's flowing full. So what the real question is, how high will the water get in the river? Right here. Let's see if it goes to the same line or goes higher or lower or just what it does. You can see all three pipes flowing. And as soon as, as, soon as the flow comes up over the spillway, you'll see the water in the V-notch square come up quite a bit. It's coming over the spillway. And other than a little bit of suds action, we're getting right to that exact same elevation in the river, or the V-notch weir, as we had before. Even though, if you look at the spillway itself, the flow's not very deep over the spillway. But we've added all the spillway flow, plus all the pipe flow, and we're getting right to the same spot in the V-notch weir, or the river. So the original hypothesis was if we added a pipe, we'd be able to reduce the flow in the river. And that just didn't happen. And then we just tried one more thing. What if we added a pipe and a siphon? Would we get any different result? The result was the same. We had the same flow in the V-notch weir or the same flow in the river. So yeah, this was a pretty good ex scientific experiment. We found the truth even though the truth didn't match our hypothesis.